Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One. It's episode number 44 and today we have both legs of the Champions League semi-finals. Of course, yesterday we were able to, uh, to beat our big, big title rivals Juventus away from home. If you missed that episode, there's a link to it as an annotation on uh, the bottom left-hand side of your picture. And also, in uh, the episode on Tuesday, we of course had the double header with both games against Chelsea in the quarter-finals. So we're through against uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona and Bayern Munich. Munich are going head to head in the other semi final, and uh, we're definitely going to have things cut up against this in this game today because, of course, Real Madrid are probably one of the best game, best teams on the game, and they got straight through in the opening minutes. Cristiano Ronaldo with a glorious opportunity, one on one, just seven minutes into the game, and he just snatched at it and I wasn't able to get the shot on target. Fortunately, it went a long way wide, but they were just piling so much pressure on me. I was able to actually catch them on the counter attack here and score a good breakaway goal with Rubinho. Of course, Mario Balotelli was uh, on the bench for this one, I actually had to play a big, big rotation side because I'd used my first team to ensure that I was able to get the victory against Juventus yesterday. So my first team was very, very tired and uh, of course for that reason I decided to play a rotation side. The players in, as, on an individual basis aren't as good as the first team but as a team fully fit they can still do a decent defensive job and a defensive job is exactly what we had to do for the majority of this game. As you can see Ronaldo is just so strong. Caceres just can't do anything against him. Sign plays a back to Ronaldo. Gorgeous cross into Robert Lewandowski. Pinpoint accuracy right onto his forehead. But he misses the chance. You'll see a replay is so close to that bottom right-hand corner. But fortunately... Robert Lewandowski heads it down and away from goal rather than down and into the goal. And Begovic can breathe a big sigh of relief. We're going to catch him on the counter attack yet again just before half time. Adam Yates breaking down the right hand side. Ramos doesn't have the pace to catch him up. Squares the ball across to Brian Cristante, but the shot is tame. It's an easy collection for, for Ike Casillas. And we really could have done with that second goal there to extend the lead just before the break. It would have done us the world of good, but we weren't able to. We went in at 1 0, and the second half was going to be another barrage of Real Madrid chances, but not before we were going to get one of our own. El Shirawi just about keeps that in. And we just about keep the chance alive as a whole, despite a couple of not the best crosses. And then the ball is eventually going to drop to Didac, of all pale people, 30 yards out. And, oh, so close to that bottom corner. Just as Lewandowski's effort flashed past the post for uh, for ourselves at that end in the first half, so did Didac's effort there. And uh, Ike Casillas was on form when the ball actually was on target. He wasn't going to let up another goal and denies Alexander Lacazette there with a great save up to his top right-hand side. And we get a corner. The ball's going to come in. Shedju's going to win the header. And again, Again, Casillas with an acrobatic camera save, and he keeps us out in the 70th minute. We stay at 1-0, and again, like I say, it was just a barrage of Real Madrid for the majority of the game. Gareth Bale plays a lovely ball into Lewandowski there. Great turn inside the first man, decides to try and chip it towards the back post, and it almost drops in the back of the net. I was just so nervous. As the ball was dropping there, you could, I could just feel my heart beating in my ears it was ridiculous I just wanted and was willing that ball to go over the bar fortunately it did we get a victory in the opening leg of the two-legged semi-final against Real Madrid 1-0 at home not only a clean sheet but no away goals given up as well but I had to play uh, the same basic rotation side for this next game against Kievo Verona because there was no way I was going to play two legs against Real Madrid with a weakened side I wanted to go away from home with a particularly strong side a full first team 11 to make sure that we had the best chance possible of getting through to the final of the European competition so we're playing with a, a not very tired but they were slightly fatigued because there was a good three or four days between uh, the Real Madrid game and this game on the Sunday so uh, fortunately there was a little bit of time for recovery but the players still weren't at 100% fitness but they got off to a decent start there trying to uh, to get ourselves in front through Rubinho again another good save from uh, from a goalkeeper there fantastic one-on-one -on -one effort and he knocked it high very very high and wide but Julian Draxler gets the ball played in beautifully there there's nothing any goalkeeper can do about that if that had been against Ike Casillas I'm still sure it would have hit the back of the net in emphatic fashion Julian and Draxler scores a great goal to give us a 1-0 lead. But then Kievo battered me. No idea why he's taking that shot from 45 yards, but it, it was very, very close in uh, in fairness. Like the D-Dat snap shot from, uh, from the Real Madrid game. About 40 yards out this one, even further out. Just curling away from goal, and perhaps that was enough to, uh, to send it past the post. Goalkeeper wasn't sure either. Didn't really commit to a dive until it was practically past him. But Sestu, as you can see, the man on the ball here, he was the main thorn in my side for the majority of this uh, game against Kievo. He was their main creative player, and I just couldn't get the ball off him. They were so close to taking the, uh, the initiative back in this game yet again. Five minutes before half-time, 
they still can't quite get themselves level. So the second half, it was just another wave of yellow. Sestu again involved. Glorious ball, another man free at the back post. This time, Asmir Begovic is able to make a good save as it's on target. And uh, fortunately, we've forced the corner, but the corner's going to come in. Sestu again is going to be the man to, uh, to stand it up. Up goes Clayton, good header. And uh, somehow, the goalkeeper isn't able to, uh, to get onto the, the loose ball. And we eventually scramble it clear through a couple of dodgy deflections. But just a couple of minutes later, they're back at me again. Stoinen on the ball. Races around my defence. Schedule's tired. Fortunately, the shot isn't very accurate whatsoever. And he really should have done better with that. But he drilled it wide off that near post. We managed to hold out towards the 80th minute now. As you can see, they're playing the ball down the left-hand side. It's Lazarevich who's going to whip the ball into the box. Eventually, it's going to come to the man at the back post. Another diving header. This time, again, it goes wide off the post. Diego Farias with a great opportunity to get them back in the game. And they still can't score. But still, they come forward. Forward, Lazarevich again down the left hand side. We get the tackle in this time from Sheju, but he's out muscled, he's tired, he can't cope. They square the ball to the man free at the far side. Again, it's Diego Farias, and this time, Kievo finally, against an extremely tired team, get themselves the goal that they were after so hard all game long. That 10 minute. 10, 10th minute opening goal from Julian Draxler basically just set me up for 90 minutes or 80 minutes of an absolute battering and eventually the back wall broke and they were able to break through and uh, unfortunately we only take a point from that one but that's not the uh, that's not to be worried about too much because we needed to pick ourselves up as a squad and uh, I needed to pick myself up mentally as well to come into this game away from home at the Santiago Bernabeu with a full 11 to play against Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-final second leg. We won a lot from the first leg. If we can get one goal, as you can see actually, just a quick note, Bayern Munich have got through to the final with a 5-4 win on penalties over Barcelona. So the winner of this game will meet FC Bayern München in the final. Not too sure where the final is being held, but still, if we can get one goal in this game, it would mean, of course, mathematically, Real Madrid would need three to go through. Because if we make it 1-0, that would be 2-0 on aggregate. If Real Madrid score two and make it 2-2 two, two on aggregate, we'll go through on away goals. So one goal for us leaves Madrid needing three. But... They were so strong again in this game. This entire episode has basically been me just scrabbling to defend at every single opportunity. We actually scram scramble the ball clear again here, but we're actually going to create a couple of opportunities for ourselves. Pedro is going to be the man to cut the ball inside to Stefan al -Sharawi. He's got another man the other side of him. It's Polly. I thought there was going to be another man the other side of me again, but there wasn't. So I tried the shot. It was blocked. el Sharawi's is going to find Polly, who's going to in turn find Kazuki Honda, who's going to in turn find Benya and have another shot blocked. It's going to come to Kazuki Honda. He can whack them on his left foot. Cuts inside. Decides not to shoot this time. Square it to uh, El Sharawi who squares it again to Mario Balotelli and we take that 1-0 lead. We have the goal that leaves Madrid needing three to get themselves into the final if they want to win La Decima here in the Champions League. But if there's any team in the world that can score three goals against you at home it's Real Madrid and they came so close there. Guita actually got a hand to that, pushed it onto the post and we survived to fight another round. But the next round came very very quickly indeed. We can't to clear our lines properly and Pedro eventually is going to give the ball away after this little passage of passing play is uh, is through. Sami Kadira nicks it off him. He's going to try and break down the left hand side. He's got a man inside him there. It's Cristiano Ronaldo yet again. Has the snapshot and heart in mouth again. Honestly that was headed towards the uh, the corner and it just bent away at the last minute. Unfortunately went past the post. You see from the angle here it looks as if it's going to go in and then just twists and bends and goes a good couple of feet wide. So we we live to fight another day. We're going at half-time at 1-0. 2-0 up on aggregate. Uh, Real Madrid need three in the second half. It's a tough ask, but like I say, if there's anyone that can do it, it's them. And if, if there's anyone that can uh, defend against it in the way we've been playing so far in this episode, it's us. But Cristiano Ronaldo, man, he's almost unplayable in moves like this. And then he has a shot like that on the end of it. It's just absolutely ridiculous. He's such a good player on FIFA. Definitely, in my eyes, the best player on FIFA 14. And he's just tearing me a new one here. Fortunately, he hasn't found a way, just, a way through just yet. But... Oh, they came so close to getting another goal here. Kadira with the eventual shot that rebounds off Robert Lewandowski and goes wide for a goal kick. And we can breathe a sigh of relief as we get another chance to, uh, to rebuild and uh, find our shape again. But Pedro breaks away here. We're going to have a chance of our own. The, uh, the ball's going to drop to El Shrawi on the edge of the box. And why in any... Like what is the decision making there? Surely in, the, in a situation like that, you'd run onto that and you would volley it. 
In in this case, El Sharawi runs on, he tries to head it from 20 yards, and in the end, gets himself injured with a sprained ankle, he's going to be out for three or four weeks, and he's going to miss the title running for the Serie A, which is absolutely vital for us, but Gareth Bale does enough to put him off, he twists his ankle, we have to bring on Adam Yayic, so not only are we... Uh, a uh, first team are down. Oh, Ronaldo, look at that. It's just ridiculous. Unfortunately, again, Robert Lewandowski is wasteful, volleys it past, or strikes it past the near post. But how many chances do Real Madrid want? They definitely had enough to uh, to score 12 against us in uh, both legs combined. But uh, we nick the ball off Isco there. Real Madrid's starting to get a little bit tired themselves here as we head towards the end of the game. De is going to find the man inside him, which is Pedro. Wonderful turn, gets inside, and it's the man from Barcelona, the former rival of Real Madrid, puts them out of the Champions League. It's 2-0 to AC Milan with 20 minutes remaining. Real Madrid need four goals, and if they haven't scored four goals in 160 minutes so far, they are not going to score four goals with 20 minutes remaining. But could they get any? Could they get any goals? Or will we be going to be able to come out of uh, two games against Real Madrid with two clean sheets? I don't know why Sami Khedira dived in on that shot. If he had just stayed on his feet and side-footed it into a corner, they would have got a goal. But the next highlight is actually going to come at their end. And we're going to get another chance to extend the lead, perhaps. Polly breaks through. Really nice run here, actually. And unfortunately, he smashes it past the post and we aren't able to extend the lead even further. But... We finished the game 2-0 victors with 3-0 victors on aggregate overall. We are through to the Champions League final for the second season here at AC Milan. That will be coming to you as a live com of the last episode in this particular series, let alone season. And uh, that will be next week before we return to the Chelsea career mode. We will be playing FC Bayern München in the final. But before we get to that final, it's all to play for in Serie A. We're second in the league, five points behind Napoli with five games to go. Can we do the double? Can we win the league and the Champions league we will find out next week this is going to be going up on thursday of course there'll be a my player episode later on tonight one that is most definitely worth a watch as well if you're keen if you're a keen admirer of that series i guarantee you you will enjoy that video tonight but that's all for this afternoon thank you very much for watching please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind if you missed the previous episode there's an annotation to it on the right hand side of your screen if you aren't subscribed already there's an annotation to do so on the left of your screen and a link in the description and your normal subscribe button and there's a link in the description as well to my twitter at chesnoy gaming feel free to come and follow me over there as well for a bit of banter on twitter but that's all for me for this afternoon my player tonight but as for now i will see you next time